Hi, I'm Brian Scott Lipton, the theater reviewer for CityTour.com. I am talking to Dave Leskowitz of Dave's Gone By for UNC Radio. On the 10th annual Total Theater Tony Show, here with me, Dave Lefkowitz, and my good friend and colleague, Brian Scott Lipton. He is all over the place these days, reviewing and writing features. You can read his critiques in City Tour and also Theater News Online. He does features and reviews for Theater Pizzazz. He also is a feature writer for In New York, and he's the former editor of Theatermania.com. Very busy, very smart man, Brian Scott Lipton. Welcome, first of all, Brian. Ryan. Thank you, Dave. So thrilled to be doing this. Did you have a thrilling season or just an okay one? Actually, I think this was overall one of the better seasons of the last few years, and it was especially a strong spring. So it, it really ended on a high note. There were a lot of great productions in the in the last month. We went back to a few of the Tony voters this year, which I haven't done in the past. So that says something about how good this season was. Well, speaking of high notes, you have one of the hotter and more contested categories in the field this year, I think. You've got Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role in a Musical of the Tony nominees. I'll read them all for you. Neil Patrick Harris, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, Ramin Karamloo for Les Mis, Andy Carl, the star of Rocky, and then two men from A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, up head-to-head -head Jefferson Mays and Bryce Pinkham. And so, one by one, maybe we'll start with Neil Patrick Harris... Sure. Well, um, Neil, I think, happens to be the favorite in this category. I do predict him as the winner, and I do think he should be the winner. Not to start with the best, but what he does up there for 90 minutes uh, by himself, I mean, not totally by himself. He's got the great Lena Hall, as you thought, in a band, but Hedwig is close to a solo show, and I have rarely ever seen a performer work this hard, work so well with an audience, and just stretch himself. I mean, if you think you know anything about Neil Patrick Harris from television or even from a little bit of stage work, you've never seen anything like he does playing the transvestite that he had hosted the Tony Awards and been so great to the Broadway community that I think he's the guy who's going to take home the trophy this year. Well, what do you think he brings to the party that uh, John Cameron Mitchell didn't when Hedwig was off Broadway all those years ago? That's a great question, Dave, and it's very different. I mean, I saw John Cameron twice, and nobody will really be John Cameron Mitchell. I have to say that John Cameron created Hedwig. That was a performance that was legendary, and had it been done on Broadway, you know, maybe we already would have had a Tony winner for Hedwig. Hmm. But what Neil brings is his own really special brand of charisma, incredible acting chops, so that he really gets into the character. He's been beautifully directed by Michael Mayer. They've created a really interesting backdrop for the story this time. The set by Julian Crouch is remarkable. I mean, it's spectacle as well. I mean, it's very, very different than when I first saw John Cameron in the tiny confines of the West Bank Theater, or even later on at the Jane Street Hotel. I mean, what you're getting here is bang for your buck. Hmm. as well as the big star performance. So. Literally and figuratively at points. So let me ask, I would figure that the other main contender in this category would be Jefferson Mays for A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Your thoughts on his chances and on him and also his co-star Bryce Pinkham. Yeah, Jefferson is remarkable. As people may or may not know in Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, he plays eight different characters. And I've seen the show twice now and I really almost could not imagine it without him. His ability to create a different characterization, to do these quick changes. Sometimes he changes characters and costumes within 30 seconds to make each one uh, fully representational, believable, and usually hysterical. I think in any other year, he would be the favorite. I have to say, I kind of half wish that they had put him in the featured category. I know he is the star. He has a Tony award. He's got the top billing. But in reality, it's still sort of the secondary role, and if they put him in featured, I think he would have been the surefire winner. Here, he certainly has still a strong chance. I'm sure there are a lot of voters who are going to vote for him, and he would be a very worthy winner. And one thing I do have to say is that all five of these guys are really worthy contenders, which is a real pleasure to say about a category. Well, let's talk a little bit um, about uh, the other folks. So Bryce Pinkham, you liked him in, in Gentleman's Guide. Yeah, Bryce was a wonderful... I don't want to say surprise, um, but, you know, it was also really daring of the creators. I mean, Bryce really is the lead character here playing Monty Navarro, the uh, would-be aristocrat who kills off everybody to get what he wants. It could have been a true star turn. 
Byrne, and they could have cast somebody much better known. And I have seen Bryce over the years, and I've always been impressed with his talent. And when they cast him, I was like, oh, well, that's a little daring not to go for a bigger name. But what he brings to the role, and again, having seen it twice, is that he makes what really could almost be a villain really likable in a way. While this guy is killing his way to the top, <laughs> you're almost rooting for him to kill his way to the top. And he's got two women, and he cheats on one with the other. And, and, you know, on paper, this could all be like, boo, 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 you know, what a terrible guy. Part of Bryce's brilliance is that you, you really love him. So that makes it a very strong performance. But I think opposite the rest of this group, it's the honor to be nominated for performance. Right. Well, what do you think of uh, Ramon Karamloo, the new Jean Valjean in the new Les Mis? I was very happy to see Ramin nominated. Ramin, sorry, um, yeah. Jean Valjean at this point is such an iconic character and has been played by so many people over the years, most recently by Hugh Jackman in the film version, that you can almost get tired of it or feel like you don't do anything new with it. So I think one of the reasons we're rewarding Ramin is that he brought an intensity, a little bit of a sexiness to the part, certainly in the earliest stages, that we don't always see. He is much younger than many of the actors who have played the role, even though he ages convincingly. He's just an extraordinary singer. His rendition of Bring It Home, which, you know, by now many of us may have been sick of ever hearing, is probably the most beautiful I've ever heard. Wow. Maybe the exception, maybe the exception called Wilkinson, who I was lucky enough to see in the original. But I think it's actually even prettier in a way than Holmes' rendition. I'm sorry that his co-star, Will Swenson, who did a remarkable job as Jean Baird, didn't also get nominated. But that's part of the problem with only five slots. This was a year where we actually could have had, and we'll get to that, maybe seven or eight. Great. Well, let's, before we get to the final nominee in this category, who are the other two or three people that you kind of wish, if there had been more slots, would have gotten a lead actor nomination in a musical? Well, in addition to Will, who, you know, as I said, did a remarkable job as Javert, not, not a part, again, that's why I'm not a producer. I, I've known Will both as a performer and as a friend for many years, and I would never have thought, like, oh, cast him as Javert, but he was totally intense and scary and totally committed. Uh, the other performer I would have loved to have seen nominated was Stephen Pasquale in The Bridges of Madison County. Oh. One of the most beautifully sung performances but also really well acted and really almost a challenge. I think his character, Robert Kincaid, this photographer who comes and romances Kelly O'Hara's character, Francesca, is a little cardboardy on paper. Stephen went so far in creating this full character that I'm sorry he couldn't have made it. And the third person, although I, I forget to be honest where they placed him, but I think he was in lead, Jake Epstein, who played Jerry Goffin in Beautiful, hmm. um, who really did Again, a show I was lucky enough to see twice, and a very complicated character, not always likable in the fact that, again, he was a womanizer, I mean... And he had mental issues. He, just, he had substance abuse issues, but, you know, he cheated on Carol King, our great American icon, and even so, you felt bad for him, and I think that spoke volumes. You really hoped for him to have a happy ending. I'm sorry that we couldn't have made the category longer to include all eight of those guys. The last guy in the category, we don't want to forget Andy Carl in Rocky. I thought he was really, really good. Yes, we certainly don't want to forget the amazing Andy Carl, who I think deserves kudos and this nomination on two fronts. I mean, first of all, his three things, really, I should say. His physical transformation is remarkable. I mean, Andy's always been sort of a hunky guy. He knows that, but still, he has physically transformed himself into like a boxer type, which is not his natural body type. In movie world, we just reward people for that, for right. changing their body. But more importantly, he managed to create a Rocky that was very recognizable from the film because this really relies on your memories of the film and of Sylvester Stallone, but it's not an imitation. He's not just doing Sly. He reminds you of Sly. He's got some of the rhythms down, but he's his own person, and that's really important. And again, he makes Rocky exactly what you need Rocky to be for this musical to work. And I do think this musical to work, which is sort of the loser that you hope will become a winner. Will this sort of third-rate boxer, and he's a little bit backwards in his social values, and will he, you know, find happiness with Adrian? And he does all that. And also the punishment that, <laughs> and I use yeah. that word literally, Andy takes in the fight scene, 
which, while brilliantly choreographed by, by Stephen Hoggett and Kelly Devine, is still truly a fight stand. I mean, you can get hurt doing that. Put yourself through that night after night, eight shows a week. That deserves sort of a special award. I kind of feel like Andy should almost be in a category of all of those. Like recipient of fight choreography. <laughs> of, of... Well, I thought that was funny. So, so last question, though, for Brian Scott Lipton of City Tour and also Theater Pizzazz and in New York. Brian, uh, be it on or off or off, off Broadway, what was your favorite show of the entire season? Uh, that's a great question, Dave. And, and as I said, this was a wonderful season. I would say my top honors has to go to the Shakespeare Globe, quote unquote, revival of Twelfth Night, starring Mark Rylance and Samuel Barnett and the cast of. Extraordinary British actors directed by Tim Carroll. Shakespeare is not necessarily, I know this is heresy, my favorite play, White Right, and Twelfth Night is a show I've seen so many times that I went in with that. Oh, I can't believe I have to sit through it again. Attitude, and it was truly transformative. I saw things in the show I've never seen before. I was completely wrapped with attention for three full hours. I laughed in places I've never laughed before. I felt the love story. What can we say about Mark Rylance? He's technically probably the most brilliant actor we've ever had. The costumes by Je Jenny Termy, who is nominated in the Hope Will Win, are just gorgeous. And to see something done in pure Elizabethan style, the way we would have seen it back in Shakespeare's day, is not something that as an American we've gotten into an experience. I know people who go to Shakespeare's club in England sometimes get that experience. Experience, but we don't. I'm so grateful that I had the chance. We are so grateful that we have had the chance to talk with Brian Scott Lipton. Where are you going to be Tony Knight? You're going to be watching from home, having a party, what? No, Tony, Tony Knight, I will be working um, the red carpet um, and the press room with Theater Pizzazz. So the videos and reports from that will be on theaterpizzazz.com um, by hopefully by the next morning. A little plug for myself. If any of you are half the Tonys, um, I should point out if you. The lovely souvenir book that you will get is more or less completely written by me, and I want to thank everybody at the American Theatre Wing and the Broadway League and, most importantly, Morris Publications for giving me the honor of letting me write the book this year. Oh, that's lovely. Well, great. And we'll be looking for you on Theatre Pizzazz. Thank you, Brian Scott Lipton, for being with us once again in the neighborhood. Thank you, Dave.